Thanks for joining us on this edition of National Focus. I'm Nisha Charles. Coming up, electronic data collection could change the way we see public health care. 2014 has been described as a milestone year for CARICOM and UWP leader Lennox Linton sworn in as leader of the opposition. Stay tuned for details of these and other stories after this. If you can believe this... Come by my house and let me show you some movies. Why can't you believe this? Some mothers don't believe their own children when they say they've been sexually abused and they don't report it. Remember, if anyone asks to see or touch their private parts, touches them inappropriately, shows them or forces them to touch one's private parts, has sex with them, shows them pornographic material, or deliberately lets them hear or see the act of sex, then it is sexual abuse. Believe your child and report the sexual abuse. For more information about child abuse, contact these agencies. This message brought to you by UNICEF and this station. Thank you for staying with us. Proper data collection could change the way the Caribbean sees public health care. That's according to Dr. Wayne Labasteed, a consultant at a recent workshop to plan the way forward for health information systems in Dominica. He says an electronic information system for health with the proper data could transform healthcare in the region. Back into 2014, and we have Dr. James Hospitalis, the executive director of our Caribbean Public Health Agency, saying that NCDs are now the leading cause of premature deaths, according, accounting for nearly half of the deaths of persons under 70 years, and two out of three deaths overall in the Caribbean. Two out of three deaths. If we control the risk factors leading to NCDs, we can prevent some 80% of all heart attacks, strokes, and type 2 diabetes, as well as 40% of cancers. If we can control the risk factors, we are no longer in a position where we can wait until we have a chance to analyze all of these paper trails that we create. We spend so much time collecting the data now, we really don't have time to analyze it and make, make it useful in the time frame that's required. Our surveillance now has to be completely responsive because things happen tomorrow. If we miss a case of Ebola that lands here tomorrow because we only discover it two weeks later, when the paper filtered to the person who finally needed to make a decision about what to do, um, in two weeks, the damage that would be done may be irrecoverable. Right? We can no longer spend time using our paper systems. According to the Honorable Minister for Health and the Environment, Dr. Kenneth Daru, the first phase of the Dominica medical information system is already in progress. Dr. Wayne says lives can be saved if proper attention is paid to the proper recording of data. We need to know that this is the same person over here as over here, but we don't need to know whom that person is. Um, so we have the public health professionals, the policy decision makers, health service planners, and so on, analyzing data on, at this level, including the risk factors and so on. We don't know who you are, but we know that you had a, a certain health outcome and this is your lifestyle profile. If each country can actually develop or agree collectively on what our standards for storing and collecting those data are, then each country can uh, contribute to a regional within the OECS and eventually a wider Caribbean surveillance system because our populations are mobile. We move all the time and people from other parts of the world are moving through our countries uh, Every year, we receive more visitors in the English-speaking Caribbean than the number of people that live in the English-speaking Caribbean. And they're bringing things with them and they're carrying things with them, right? So we are a vulnerable region. We, we are the most tourism-dependent region in the world. And we need to know in real time what's happening across the region with our diseases. He says everyone should be involved to ensure that adequate data is collected. We need to know that this is the same person over here as over here, but we don't need to know whom that person is. Um, so we have the public health professionals, the policy decision makers, health service planners, and so on, analyzing data on, at this level, including the risk factors and so on. We don't know who you are, but we know that you had a, a certain health outcome and this is your lifestyle profile. If each country can actually develop 
or agree collectively on what our standards for storing and collecting those data are, then each country can com uh, contribute to a regional within the OECS and eventually a wider Caribbean surveillance system because our populations are mobile. We move all the time and people from other parts of the world are moving through our countries. Uh, every year we receive more visitors in the English-speaking Caribbean than the number of people that live in the English-speaking Caribbean. And they're bringing things with them and they're carrying things with them. Right? So we are a vulnerable region. We, we are the most tourism dependent region in the world and we need to know in real time what's happening across the region with our diseases. Leader of the United Workers Party, Lennox Linton, has been sworn in as leader of the opposition. He took his oath at a ceremony at the State House on Tuesday. I, Lennox Linton, do swear. I, Lennox Linton, do swear. That I will faithfully bear true allegiance to the Commonwealth of Dominica. That I will faithfully bear true allegiance to the Commonwealth of Dominica. So help me God. So help me God. I, Lennox Linton. I, Lennox Linton. Do swear. Do swear. That I will faithfully execute the office of leader of the opposition. That I will faithfully execute the office of leader of the opposition. Without fear or favor. Without fear or favor. Affection or ill will. Affection or ill will. And that in the execution of the functions of that office. And that in the executions of the functions of that office. I will honor. I will honor. Uphold. Uphold. And preserve the constitution of the Commonwealth of Dominica. I will honor, uphold, and preserve the constitution of the Commonwealth of Dominica. So help me God. So help me God. 2014 has been described as a milestone year for the Caribbean community, CARICOM. In July 2014, heads of government approved the community's first five-year strategic plan, which covers the years 2015 to 2019. In his Christmas message, Ambassador Irene Lawak, Secretary General of CARICOM explained that the plan to seek to ensure that CARICOM is positioned to withstand the effects of events such as the global economic and financial crises and provides a way forward for pursuing sustainable growth and development as a region. The Secretary General says implementation of this plan is a major step in CARICOM's ongoing reform process. He says the region recognizes the difference that integration makes as it relates to healthcare, education, and communication. Laroc says integration has never been more important than at this time, and the coming year should mark for CARICOM the continuation of a dynamic period in the effort to create a sustainable, secure, and viable community for all. Honorable Minister for Tourism and Urban Renewal, Robert Tong, says his ministry will continue to take action to develop the tourism industry. GIS News caught up with Honorable Tong during the inaugural call of the Costa Fortuna on Thursday, December 18th. It was his second official assignment as Minister for Tourism. The Honorable Tourism Minister explained to GIS News the importance of cruise visits such as these to Dominica. Cruise tourism is very important for Dominica because it, it helps to um, increase our, our, our revenue to the country. However, it is not the main driver. Steel was actually the main driver where you 80% um, of the revenue from, from the cruise, from the tourism business comes from steel over. But everything is important. One on one is going to give you two, two on two is going to give you four. So we all have to work together in all the various areas to bring as many people to, to, to Dominica. But very importantly, when they come to Dominica, the experience that they receive has to be at the level that they reach from other places or even better. So we're hoping that as we move forward, we can begin to improve on the experience that the, that the, um, that the pass passengers receive, the stay over crew, um, to, um, tourists receive, so that they'll be more than happy to tell their friends about it and ask them to come to Dominica. The new minister plans to fulfill the objectives set for the tourism sector by the Dominica Labour Party administration in its new term. This includes improving air and sea access, the promotion of ecotourism, and upgrading and sustaining service skills and accommodation in Dominica. Work has already begun on the construction of the Rosa River Promenade, and also on the cards is the construction of an international airport. The administration will also ensure that its human resource is well trained in tourism business. Honorable Tong spoke about his experience as tourism minister after just a few days on the job. My glass is always um, half full 
it is never half empty. So I see this as a challenge and I think it's a challenge that I can surely do not only by myself but with the support of the staff and also Dominicans on a whole. And so far the, the, the response has been very positive I must say. The first couple of days it has been meeting all the, the staff members, all the various departments to ensure I, I, I meet the staff and the staff know me, they have an understanding as to what I, I, I look forward to and how I, I plan to deal with stuff. So, so far that's been very, very good, very easy. Obviously that's the easiest part. The, the next part is basically trying to delve into the information. Hopefully by today I will also get briefed on um, urban renewal because that's also um, part of my portfolio in terms of trying to make Roto Roso as beautiful as, as it should be and a place that we'll all be proud of. Honorable Robert Tong was sworn into cabinet on December 13, 2014 as the Minister for Tourism and Urban Renewal. The Ministry of Agriculture continues to promote crop diversification. To support this effort, agricultural officials continue to explore the introduction of new crops. That's according to team leader of the South Agricultural Region, Austin Bell. Bell was speaking with GIS News last week. There's some, some, some efforts with regards to onions. Um, that is a crop that we can also do very, very, very well, well here. And um, also in terms of our staples, um, um, in terms of sweet potatoes, tashin, tanias, and um, ginger, the ministry is looking at the possibility of increasing the level of um, um, production so that we can, we can look at the export markets. Because there's, there's certainly a, a, a great demand for, for, for these items in the Eastern Caribbean. Um, keep in mind that Dominica is one of the CARICOM islands that is co considered as, as one of the bread, bread, bread baskets. And um, they, they, there's a lot of, um, lot, lot of hope that um, Dominica can supply countries like Barbados and um, Trinidad with a lot of those crops. The team leader noted that the government of Dominica through the Ministry of Agriculture has assisted in this effort. As long as the farmer meets the criteria, he's supplied with, um, with, with his fertilizers and also assisted with, he, he can be assisted with, with, with plants also. So um, in, in this way, the ministry is um, subsidizing some of the costs that the farmer has to spend because the cost can, can sometimes be a, a difficult factor for, for, for the farmer. So that the farmer has to provide his plants and his labor and his, hus and his husbandry. But the aspect of fertilizers will be made available. As you know, the, the price of fertilizers is quite, quite, quite expensive. Um, many, many farmers have been responding to this particular program. And it is clear that, um, that we, in the near, near, near future, we, we, are, we are going to have an increase in, in export of those items here. A lot of help has been given to the farmers who want to, who want to, um, who want to move at a commercial level. And the, and the current program of the ministry right now is to, is to, um, is to um, what do you say, build the smaller farmer to give him confidence to, 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 to expand. And one of his, 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 his constraints was really cash. And if he's supplied with fertilizer and he has the land, it means he can now begin to expand. The government of Dominica will pay special attention to sustainable development in its new term. That's according to the Honorable Minister for Commerce, Enterprise and Small Business Development, Rosalind Paul. The Honorable Minister was speaking to GIS News last week. I would hope that increasingly um, we as a nation would see opportunities, for example, by utilizing our natural resources for sustainable livelihoods. Um, that's a vision of the government of Dominica, the Labour Party government, as articulated in its manifesto, as articulated in the growth and social protection strategy, and as demonstrated, for example, for the large investment, very heavy investment made in towards geothermal energy. So there are a number of opportunities that are provided um, that are available and we would hope that Dominicans can take advantage of these opportunities. The Honorable Minister gave details of plans for her ministry. I see, um, as I said, the ministry um, having greater outreach, probably decentralizing the um, small business um, initiative. I also see the need for greater utilization of our community resource centers that can serve for business incubation. Um, they are largely underutilized in my opinion and they can serve a greater purpose 
Um, if we're growing green as well, I'm um, moving towards the green economy. As I said, we need to look towards um, generating sustainable livelihoods through our natural resource base. The new minister also noted that waste management, the provision of services beyond Dominica, quality increase of products and services, import substitutions, light manufacturing, cottage industry as well as youth enterprise will be areas of focus in the new term. Paul believes that enterprise is a key aspect in the development of Dominica's socio-economy. Enterprise would be a cross-cutting, um, it would go across various sectors, tourism, agriculture, services, cultural industries. And so I see it as a very um, critical industry to our socio-economic development, to changing the socio-economic landscape of this country. The Honorable Minister holds a master's degree in rural development, diplomas in gender, climate change and social work, as well as a wealth of experience in community work, which she adds will assist her in her role. The Dominica Labour Party administration has recognized the importance of small and micro business sector as a vibrant contributor to economic and social transformation in Dominica. In light of this, government has initiated and in some instances strengthened a number of institutions to assist budding businesses. These include the Dominica Youth Business Trust, created in 2003, the Employment and Small Business Support Agency, and the National Employment Program, launched in December 2013. In its new term in office, the Labour Party administration promises to focus on spreading the entrepreneurial culture among the young people of Dominica. Government will provide management training to ensure small businesses to grow, work closely with financial institutions to ensure the availability of investment capital, and liaise with the Dominica State College on altering its curricula to enhance its contribution to the new business development drive. And before we go, here are a few announcements. Vacancy exists for one consultant accountant within the Office of the Director of Audit. As part of the EU-funded Public Financial Management Reform Program, an accountant will provide technical assistance over a six-month period. The successful candidate will be expected to train officers on how to perform the following tasks in a proactive manner under the supervision of the Director of Audit. Develop, monitor and review departmental accounting policies, procedures and processes. Audit and prepare financial statements in accordance with relevant guidelines, frameworks and statutory requirements. Conduct performance reviews of government's ongoing programs and conduct performance reviews of statutory corporation and government-owned companies. The ideal candidate should possess at least a first degree in accounting or other related field. At least professional qualifications in accounting from a recognized accounting body, the ACCA, CGA or similar general proficiency experience, knowledge of principles and procedures for compensation and benefits, knowledge of law, legal codes, government regulations and executive orders, knowledge of business and management principles, knowledge of economic and accounting principles and practices and the analysis and reporting of financial data. Specific professional experience, at least five years professional experience in accounting, Knowledge of commonly used concepts, practices and procedures within the field of business administration. Applications including curriculum vitae should be submitted no later than Wednesday 31st December 2014 at 12 p.m. to the National Authorizing Officer for the European Development Fund Office of the NAO EDF, 3rd Floor Financial Center, Kennedy Avenue, P.O. Box 1102, Roseau, Dominica or email edf at cwdom.dm. The Government of the Commonwealth of Dominica has received financing from the Global Environment Facility through the United Nations Environment Program to support the preparation of Dominica's third national communications to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Part of this funding is to be utilized to hire national consultants to undertake technical studies and draft the national report. The government of Dominica is seeking expressions of interest from suitably qualified national consultants who have at least five years experience in the following areas. Greenhouse gas inventory from energy, transportation, solid waste and industrial processes. 
inventory of carbon sinks in forests, inventory of carbon sinks in agriculture, climate change mitigation including renewable energy, energy efficiency and energy conservation. Mainstreaming climate change into national development planning, training in public education, outreach on climate change, and systematic observation systems for climate change, including hydrometeorological systems. Work on this project will commence in January 2015 and will be completed by May 2016. Successful applicants will be expected to start work on or before February 2, 2015. Any persons interested in being considered for any of the above positions are requested to submit their current curriculum vitae and letter of interest to the following. Director of the Environmental Coordinating Unit, the Roseau Fisheries Complex, Daniel Junior Charles Boulevard, Roseau. Telephone number 266-5256 or email at ecu at dominica.gov.dm. Submissions can be submitted electronically or in writing to the above address and must be received no later than Wednesday, January 7, 2015, at 4 p.m. Expressions of interest received after this date will not be considered. Private candidates registered to write the January 2015 CXC examinations are asked to collect their timetables from the local registrar's office during normal office hours. Please be guided accordingly. All persons who are required to pay liquor and store licenses in the Laplane area, including Delis's, Wotica, Grand Four, and surrounding villages, are notified that revenue officers will be present at the police station at Laplane on Monday, December 29, 2014, to collect payments for licenses from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And that's the English news. Coming up, tips on staying healthy during the holidays. The black sitatoka fungus can survive on banana and plantain leaves even after they have been cut from the tree. Farmers and hucksters are encouraged to use alternate cushioning material when moving produce from farm to the market. Do not use banana and plantain leaves as cushioning. It is against the law to move banana and plantain trash from the field. Obey the law and stop the spread of black sitatoka today. It's the season to be jolly as well as gaining weight. You can use some of these tips to maintain a healthy weight and stay active throughout the season. If you can, keep the focus on the fun and not on food. Modifying your eating to the times when you visit your relatives. This is so you don't overeat. And indulge in only the most special holiday treats. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica and follow our Twitter at gisdominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube. From all of us here on the GIS News Production team, I'm Nisha Charles. Thanks for watching. <laughs>